Hi, I'm Ms. Hearn. Let's get started. Consider the solid formed by revolving the region bounded by y equals 1 over x, y equals x over x squared plus 1, x equals 2, and x equals 1 around the y-axis. Set up a definite integral to find the volume of the solid. Okay, so the first kind of phase of these problems will always be to sketch a graph. And I know basically what 1 over x looks like without having to do any work. I know what x equals 2 and x equals 1 look like. So let's start with those. And it has an asymptote here. It doesn't cross 0. Now I'm not sure what x over x squared plus 1 looks like. A couple of things come to mind. One, go ahead and plot whatever points that this goes through when x is 1 and x is 2, just to get an idea. Now another thing I'm going to be concerned about is, is there anywhere in between here that this maybe crosses the other function and comes back down? How can I determine whether or not that happens? Set them equal to each other. So let's go ahead and do that. Okay, 1 over x equals x over x squared plus 1. Okay, I'm going to use the cross multiplication. That means we get x squared equals x squared plus 1, which is a contradiction. 0 does not equal 1. So this may never intersect something like that. The important thing is what region is within the bounds of these four graphs. And we have the four corner points of those bounds. And let me highlight the little piece here. This is the piece that we're talking about. All right, so we also need to think about what's the axis of revolution, which has to be given to you. So it's the y axis. We have not been told which method to use. So here's where we figure out which method is best for us. Sometimes either method will work. But in this case, remember what our functions are. The top function, y equals one over x, I could rearrange that and get that in terms of y if I wanted to. But the bottom function, y equals x over x squared plus one, can you imagine trying to solve that for x equals something? It's gonna be very messy. It's not that it's impossible, but it's gonna be messy. So why is that important? Because I think I would rather have a dx problem. Wouldn't you rather have a dx problem here? If I want a dx problem in this scenario, how do I want my rectangle oriented? Do I want it up and down vertical or do I want it horizontal. I want it up and down. Why? Because the bottom of the rectangle would be facing the x-axis, which means I would have a dx problem. So that's what's going to dictate what method I use, because is that rectangle, the one that I want, is it perpendicular to the axis of revolution or parallel to it, right? It's parallel to the axis of revolution. So that tells me that I have to use shell method. You see how the thought process goes there? So you draw your graph. You draw what axis you're revolving around. You determine if you want this to be a dx problem or a dy problem. You draw the appropriate rectangle and whether it's parallel or perpendicular to the axis dictates which method you have to use. Now it's possible you pick wrong and you go to set it up and you say, oh wait, this isn't gonna work. And you try the other one, but this is the one that I wanna try first. In that case, let's write down the formula that we use for the shell method when we have a dx problem. Two pi times the integral from a to b of what? P of x, the radius, h of x, the height of the rectangle, dx, the width of the rectangle. So now we go about identifying p of x and h of x. Okay, p of x is by definition the distance between the axis of revolution and the center of that rectangle. But that's always because of the problems that I'm giving you, that's always going to be x or y, in this case x, right? Some random x value is in the middle of the rectangle, that's the distance between the axis and the center of the rectangle. H of x is, in the, in the shell method, h of x is the challenge. So I don't know if you can see in that tiny little rectangle that I have drawn in there, but the top of it is touching y equals one over x, and the bottom of it does not go down to the axis. So I can't just say the height is one over x. 
That would give you a rectangle that's too tall. I need the actual height of the rectangle. But in this case, we have to subtract to get the height, right? Top minus bottom. So the height of this rectangle, h of x, is going to be 1 over x minus x over x squared plus 1. So now let's, uh, what are the bounds going to be? Okay, how do you know that it's x values for the bounds? dx. So we're going to go from 1, because we have 1, x equals 1, to x equals 2. We're going to go from 1 to 2. Okay, so what's the integral then that we need to solve? We need to solve 2 pi times the integral from 1 to 2 of x times 1 over x minus x over x squared plus 1 dx. 2.02. So that's the volume of that little I hope object. you found this video useful. If you did, please remember to like it. Featured in my next video, follow the link. Group.